Come on, Seb, let's go. All hands Time for us to deploy. Caused by rough atmospheric conditions. Look at that. Shame we can't get any closer and just blast them away from up here. They've got some crazy anti-aircraft systems. Watch Alpha. Report immediately to base C for pre-launch. Shit, that's us. Let's go. The beachhead units got pretty badly fucked up, but the second wave is already on deck. The point guy is Captain Narva leading Avenger Convoy. <laughs> He's kicking his ass and taking names at the Sari Square. Next stop is the palace. Well, scuttlebutt is we're going to be tasked to Narville. Now hold up, Seb. Master I got the Mark access code. Secure small arms store in 30 mics. Oh, guards of Seb, need up. Our council scientists are tracking nukes to Higgs store. Fill us in on his plans. I want a ticket to that shit. Hey! Come on, you two! I ain't got all day! I gotta get home in time to tuck guards with mom in! <laughs> Units 20. Check your gear. That includes you, Neko. Thing you can get is a thing to save your life. How are the men holding up? Yeah, they're ready. Just want to be let off their leash. I wish I was going with you on this one. I get along, somebody. I'm counting on it. Good luck, Rico. Hey, what's going on guys? This is the Brigade here, and we're going to do something a little different this time, and I know for a lot of you guys that are regulars on my channel, uh, and who knows and who knows me mostly for Dark Souls, you're probably like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> right? But we're going to do something different. Um, it was my original intent to stop at 200 uploads, right? But the thing is, now that I have... Uh, actually, now that it has been confirmed that Dark Souls 2 won't be out until March of 2014, I'm going to be preparing for the PS4 release. Now, some of you may ask yourself, dude, how in the heck are you preparing for the 2000, I mean, for the PS4 release by playing a throwback game called Killzone? Well, the thing is, I'm pretty sure some of you guys may have heard me say in the past that there's a couple franchises that I absolutely love. One obviously being a Souls franchise, and the second is the Killzone franchise. Dude, I love this franchise more than, I can't say more than any other, but I would say the Killzone franchise is second best to the Soul franchise to me. This is my personal opinion. Now, this is obviously a first person shooter. Uh, now, I've never really been into first person shooters. But ever since I had this experience with Killzone 2, and I believe this game came out in 2009, right? So this is like a four-year-old game, either 2009 or 2010, I can't really remember. But ever since this franchise uh, was original, well actually I can't even say originally released, because the original Killzone was released on PS1, I didn't know anything about it, right? I stumbled across uh, a review of Killzone 2 on game trailers. And after I saw that review, I just said, you know what, I don't have any experiences with first-person shooters, but I think this will be my first, right? And I am so glad I came across that footage because I've been in love with the franchise ever since. So, to prepare for the Shadow Fight, and actually, this is going to be a series, this is going to be a series that I like the title, Preparing for the Shadow Fall. Now, for you guys that are not familiar with... Um, Kill Zone Shadowfall. Right, it's basically going to be the uh, PS4 version, or actually PS4 addition to the Kill Zone franchise, uh, 
which will be released. Um, they didn't really say. All they said was holiday season. So sometime within the fourth quarter of this year. Right? So, you know, since I am so waiting, for Killzone Shadow Fall, what I decided to do is go ahead and do a throwback walkthrough of Killzone 2 and do a few multiplayer videos of Killzone 3. Now, some of you guys may be saying, well, why in the world would you be doing a play uh, playthrough of Killzone 2 but multiplayer videos of Killzone 3? Well, in my personal opinion, the um, multiplayer of Killzone 3 is a lot better, is more polished, is not as sluggish as Killzone 2. I mean, it just has a lot of improvements. Now, this is not to say that Killzone 2 wasn't superior in its own way, because it really was. I mean, you could basically create your own games, you could put forth limitations uh, to the participants in those games as far as weapon selections and everything else, but overall the look the feel i really prefer kill zone 3 now keeping all that in mind i hope they kind of um, do a hybrid creation of the kill zone shadow fall uh, multiplayer and that you will be able to create games like in kill zone 2 um, and establish your own rules and regulations for those worlds and maps but at the same time have a lot of the same fast quick pace uh, multiplayer that is experienced in kill zone 3 now, let's just talk about this game a little bit. Like I said before, I absolutely love this franchise. If you guys have never played Killzone 2, right, go ahead, save your allowance, go cut a lawn. I think the rate for cut, cutting lawns are like 20 bucks, right? So if you're a teenager and you're just one of those kind of kids who are in the house doing nothing, right, go get a chore, cut a grass, you know, shovel snow or something. Just do one or two lawns and you'll be able to get kill zone two. Even though this game is like, what, three or four years old, the, uh, the single player version is classic. 100% classic in my personal opinion. I mean, now, some one thing that people kind of didn't like or they kind of complained about is uh, what they call the sluggish controls. Right? Which it is true, it is kind of sluggish. But see, the thing with me is, um, I spent six years in the military, right? And I wasn't a paper, you know, I wasn't a paper pusher, you know. Um, and, and for a lot of you guys that may not be familiar with the military, paper pusher is a term that describes guys that you know in our, that are in the office. You know, they're kind of like admin. You know, I wasn't a paper pusher. Actually, I was uh, in counterintelligence for three years, and then I did a little uh, combat arms for three years. Now, for anyone in combat arms, you would know that unlike these games, you know, kind of like Call of Duty or Battlefield, that'll make you think having a heavy weapon load, you know, you could just whisk your weapon to the left and right and just smoothly run. That is far from true, right? When you're out there doing your force marches, you know, you have all this weapon equipment. I mean, you're doing patrols. You're not just smoothly moving around with your weapon and equipment. No, because it's heavy. <laughs> right? Uh, case in point. Um, I was stationed at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Shout out to all my uh, Fayetteville residents. <laughs> right? I was down there for six years. And actually, I was a paratrooper. Right? 82nd Airborne Division. You guys want to see some good... Uh, um, uh, airborne uh, exercises go ahead and YouTube 82nd Airborne Division uh, jump. I guess you could do something like that, like Sicily Drop Zone. Right? And that'll basically give you a short description of some of the things that I did. Right? I jumped out of airplanes, did it for six years. Right? Busting my knees up. You know, I mean, I actually dislocated my hip one time. But it was all good because right now I'm 100%. Actually, I've been 100% ever since, right? Now, luckily, I may have dinged myself and got hurt a few times. But it was never enough to put the brigade out of action. I just say all that to say that the sluggish, the kind of somewhat sluggish feel to this game is kind of accurate, right? Because you can't have a whole bunch of equipment on hand. And, I mean, you're just moving around with the speed of lightning as if you had nothing. Right, because equipment is heavy. 
you have your weapon, you have several magazines, I mean you have canteens, you have your utility belt, in some cases you have a pack on your back, and all these, you know, even if you work out, right, work out or not, I mean you're running around, hiding around uh, barriers, you know, concealing yourself around walls and doing all this stuff, it will get weighty, right, so the weighty feel, I mean it felt pretty natural to me. And, I th and like I said before, I think that's just one of those things wherein you have real life experience and you just kind of think of it practically and you're like, well, I mean, it should be kind of weighty on the controls. So, you know, that's one of the things where a lot of people had, you know, that's one of the complaints that a lot of people had. They're like, well, the controls feel kind of weighty. Well, it was fine to me, right? And it's still fine. Um, aside from that, one thing I do not like about this game, um, and like I said, this is kind of when PS3 was sorta new, right? It wasn't brand new, but um, actually this was Guerrilla Games' first installment um, uh, on the PS3, right? So one thing that you guys would notice, it won't be lag, it won't be a delay in the recording, it won't be something wrong with YouTube, but every now and then when the game loads, it will pause. Right, and luckily we didn't have that problem in Killzone 3. They found a way to fix it. But aside from, um, and actually I can't even say the weightiness of the game because I don't have a complaint, but I do know a lot of people complain about it. So aside from that, and aside from the periodic lag when the game is loading, this game was 100% awesome, especially the single player. Now, the multiplayer, it was cool for its day. Right, but if you played a lot of recent um, uh, first-person shooters, it'll probably be kinda, it's still kind of fun, you know. But according to today's standards, you guys may it may not really appeal to you, right? So that's why I said I will go ahead and do a full walkthrough of Killzone 2, and then I will add a few multiplayer. Uh, uploads for Killzone 3. Now, to my surprise, Killzone 3 is still off the hook. Still. So for all you Killzone 3 guys, and you know, you kind of um, are preparing for the Shadowfall, just as I am, and maybe you want to get some good games, go ahead and do some multiplayer of Killzone 3. Those maps are still full. Still. I got so many good games in Killzone, it was ridiculous. Now, when I say good games, I'm not necessarily saying because, you know, I was kicking you-know-what and taking names. Because actually what I did was, this was a new profile. I wanted to go ahead and, because actually, on my main profile of Killzone 3, I mean, I'm the top general, I have everything maxed out. I mean, I've pretty much achieved all of the, I've actually pretty, pretty much, um, achieved all of the uh, rewards right there's certain goals that you have to accomplish i mean i pretty much accomplished all of them right um aside from a few side missions that i'm just not going to take the time to do but i mean i pretty much achieved everything in the kill zone three so i just decided i said you know what i'm just going to go ahead and build um a multiplayer uh character from scratch right so this is my mark regular martyr brigade profile the one without the 99 and I just basically started the kill zone 3 multiplayer from scratch so even keeping that in mind I was still getting a lot of kills so it was definitely a great experience and for a lot of you guys that may be friends on my PSN you'll know that I've been playing a lot of key, uh, kill zone 3 a lot <laughs> right I've been doing a lot of that kill zone 3 multiplayer now uh, back onto Kill Zone 2. Um, one thing that I really like about this game, it really feels like a war zone, right? I mean, the music and some of the levels, you have propaganda speakers in the back. And, you know, when you read the whole backstory, and this is just to kind of change the subject a little bit, you know, it's really interesting to me the psychology, well, actually, I can't even say the perception of what good or bad is. Right, because when you look at this game for face value, you know, you see these guys, you know, these humanoid looking guys, you know, and they have bright colors, 
right? So because you see them um, and they are more of a reflection of yourself, you almost automatically side with them and say, well, the ISA are the good guys. Actually, they're not. They are not the good guys, right? And in addition to the ISA, you know, you guys... You know, you may look at the hell gas and you may say, oh, they're the bad guys. Look at them. They have red eyes. They have dark colors. I mean, they're our enemies. And actually, if you guys ever read the backstory, that is totally wrong. Now, maybe one of these videos, I might just talk about the complete backstory, but I won't do it in this particular video as is, as in, uh, because this is the first one in the series. So I don't know, maybe two or three videos down the line, I might actually just use the whole commentary to talk about the complete backstory. Right. So um, I say all that to say it's really interesting how perception can control your mind. Right. You have one perception, but the reality in a lot of cases is different. Because like I said before, the hell gas are actually the good guys. Um, just to give a brief overview of it. Basically, the planet was out of there. Right, and a lot of these corporations were taking bids on um, new lands that they can occupy. Right, so the hell gas bought this piece of land legally. They purchased it legally, and actually, um, everyone else they didn't even want the land mass because they're like, I mean, what can we do there? I mean, the least, I mean, it's horrible there. The living conditions are bad. Survive, survivability doesn't really look good and there's really no motivation for us to go there but then after they start seeing the success that the hell gas had they said you know what i think we kind of want our our you know we want our hand in that area and they're like hold on uh, -uh. <laughs> you guys didn't want a part of this when we were struggling but now that you see how well we're doing you want to dig your little stinker fingers in our land no you better get out of there so basically, the, I, the ISA are imperialist, right? They're occupying something that was legally and rightfully um, belonging to the Hellgast, right? And that's, like I said before, that's just a brief overview. Probably three or four videos down the line, I may give you an actual uh, full explanation of the story. But, you know, for a lot of you lore dudes, you know, and you're kind of Killzone fans yourself, you could just go ahead and pull it up on Google, right? You could just go to Killzone Backstory, and you could check it out. All right, so enough about that. Now, one thing I like about, another thing I like, I, there's so many things about this game that I love. Um, but another thing in particular I like about Killzone 2 is the AI. I mean, they're kind of awesome, <laughs> in my personal opinion. I mean, they're aggressive, they'll come hunt you down, they'll attack you, they'll butt strike you, and they talk a lot of crap, right? If you're able to really listen to the dialogue by some of these ridiculous AI, some of the things they say, I mean, they just, I mean, you really get the impression that they are out to get you, they hate your guts, and I think it's absolutely wonderful, right? It's not one of those games where, you know, the AI is just trying to shoot you down and they're not really talking, but you can kind of feel the disdain for you and their voices right and i think that is awesome and like i said this game is like what three or four years old i can't remember remember if it was released in 2009 or 2010 but this came out somewhere around the time that uh, demon souls was released right because i think i was playing this before i played demon souls and then after uh, demon souls re was released i pretty much retired from killzone 2 Right, obviously because uh, uh, Demon Souls was an awesome game, but I think this came out a little bit before Kill, uh, before Demon Souls. I can't really remember. All right, so enough about that. So we're gonna go ahead and stock up on our grenades. All right, and this weapon pretty much sucks. I mean, it's kind of good in multiplayer. I mean, you can basically one or two shot kill somebody with it, but it's just too slow. But at the end of the day, I mean, it kind of should be slow, right? If you guys ever shot a weapon like that, you would know. I mean, you can't pop off like a semi-automatic, <laughs> right? So there's a lot of realism in these games. Well, this game in particular. All right, so I hope you guys got a good opportunity to check out E3 2013. 
Um, and actually, you know, going into it, like I've said in the past, I'm not really a gamer, right? But there were a few games that I am really interested in, right? Such as Exhibit A, the Killzone franchise, right? I definitely will be getting my PS4 upon release, and I will be playing, um, well, actually looking forward to playing Killzone Shadowfall. Um, so that's one game in particular. Uh, that Wolfenstein, like I said before, I'm not, I've never really been into first person shooters, but that Wolfenstein game looks bossy, right? So I really think I'm going to make an investment in that. Now, um, since I am loyal to the Killzone franchise, I won't be waiting for any reviews or anything because, like I said, I'm loyal to the franchise, so I'm just going to make the purchase. The Wolfenstein, I think I'm going to wait a few days until I start watching it. Now, the footage that I've seen thus far, it looks pretty awesome. But like I said before, I'm not really familiar with Wolfenstein. I don't really know anything about the backstory or anything like that. So I think I'm going to wait until uh, one or two reviews are posted before I make that investment. But from what I heard, that won't even be released until sometime 2014 or uh, sometime late, late last quarter of 2013. So we will see. So. Aside from Killzone, Shadowfall, and Wolfenstein, um, I think that was pretty much it. You know, like I said before, there's not really getting, it's not really that many games that I'm looking forward to getting. You know, and, and that has nothing to do with game selection. I'm just not really a gamer. But one thing that I do believe is that um, when you like a particular franchise, then you should support it. Right. Not only because you think their games is cool, but you know you want to invest your daughter, your dollars, in helping those franchises so that they can continue to making good products. Right. So that's one thing that I do, and that's why anytime a Killzone game is released, I'm going to support the franchise. Right. Flat out. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm going to go out and get handhelds and get every single. Um, product that they release but insofar as I have a console and they release console material if it's from Guerrilla Games and especially from the Killzone franchise I'm getting it on release <laughs> flat out and the same could be said with the Soul franchise so um, that is pretty much it for this first video of the preparing for the Shadowfall series now this is going to be a complete walkthrough and like I said before, it is going to be broken up in several videos. This is just part one. And the preparing for the Shadowfall series will not only, like I said before, include this Killzone 2 walkthrough, but it will also include multiplayer for Killzone 3. Because I know for a lot of you guys that may have been um, Killzone 3 multiplayer fan, you know, fans in the past, you may have put it down, you know, kind of, kind of just like I did. Right, and just say, well, I'm playing Dark Souls, or I'm playing this game, or I'm playing that game, and that, prob that game is probably not getting any action. So hopefully by watching some of these multiplayer videos, you guys will kind of be motivated to jump back on the Killzone 3 multiplayer just as I did. Because despite how old Killzone 3 multiplayer may be, like I said before, there are still tons of full games. I mean, and I'm not just talking about weekends, because I'm pretty sure some of you guys may know, especially you Twitch guys may know. I work weekends, right? So I don't even play video games on the weekends. I play during the week, during my off days. So, you know, it's not one of those things, well, dude, obviously it's the weekend, so of course it's going to be busy. No. Dude, I was playing like in the morning during the weekdays, and I was getting tons of full games. And that's just a, a reflection on how good so many people the multiplayer of Killzone 3 is, right? It's an awesome series. And like I said before, I've never played a Call of Duty game, so I'm not making a comparison. I'm just saying, based upon my own experiences, the Killzone 3 multiplayer experience is definitely an awesome one. All right, so that'll pretty much do it for part one of the preparing for the Shadowfall uh, series. Now, for all you guys that uh, check out my channel for Dark Souls material, 
I'm not going to abandon Dark Souls, right? But I will uh, make contributions to another franchise that I absolutely love. So, I, like I said before, I will continue to make videos. I kind of have some things in mind, but I will dedicate several uploads to the Preparing for the Shadow of the Wall series. So, hey, until next time, Martyrs Brigade. Captain Narwhal is expecting you ASAP. Convoy's taking a real hammering. Bizarre Square. Yippity fucking doo da. Hurry up, Garza. Good to go. I never saw anything like it before. You don't say. All I know is Narvel's a piece of work. If he's in trouble, things are really eating up. 